Okay, guys. We got a great number of guests, and uh, but we got the most important guest uh, is you. It's really without you, we couldn't have made it. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, especially you. The <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, round of applause. So I'll, I'll, I'll proudly give the mic to uh, a man who we can almost call a friend. <coughs> I'm proud of you. Come on, RJ. Give my hand. As I said, I, I took a short clip of us walking in Amsterdam yesterday and called it Walking with Dinosaurs. No offense. <laughs> But that's how it feels like, I feel like a little puppy and yeah. you're the dinosaur. Oh, so, uh, enough crap for me, I'm not important, you are. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> it is kind of dinosaur-like at this point, isn't it? You know, I got to second what Marvin said. They, it's a great treat for me to be here and, and I know a lot of other people have come a long way to, to, to be here, to, of the original people, to have a chance to, for you to meet us and to hear some of the stories and talk together. And we're going to have a lot of fun today. I guarantee it. It's going to be a lot of fun all day long. But it's, I, I came here partly for the fun, but I came here mostly for a chance to meet you. The, the fact that after all of these years, after all of this time, you guys still have so much passion for this thing we did so long ago and, and that, that we still believe in them. I'm, I'm talking to so many people here who are still using the machine every day if you're email and web browsing and streaming movies and everything else. It's just astonishing. Well, it's both astonishing that it still lives and it's astonishing that you guys are working on a machine that runs at 7 megahertz. Come on! Man. Like, Jesus, really? <laughs> And, and while Marvin left one country out of the cheer, and I'd like to, is, is there anyone from America here? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, for the record, I am actually 100% Polish, I am. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's the, the world community that's here today, and, and, and to, to be in your presence, to be with you know people that still believe, that still use, that to be uh, the happy recipient of so many emails and, and letters I received from people over the years, telling stories about how this humble computer that we made helped you get a launch in your career, or gave you some guidance, or inspired you to become a game developer, or whatever. There's so many awesome stories that that grew out of this thing that we did. And, and I, I bask in the glory of that. <laughs> what I do, you know, and your successes, they warm my heart, they fill me up to know that that thing that we did was so good and, and so helpful to so many people in so many different ways. I, I, I welcome you all to this event. I hope I have a chance to speak with everyone, you know, today. And let's find some time, let's go get a beer later, something, whatever. Grab me, find me, talk to me. I just want to get to meet all of you. And I welcome everyone. I hope you have a great time. Cheers. There's one uh, very important man missing from this party. Uh, he sadly cannot be with us, but we gave him a sort of a shrine. Jay Miner. Two years. I won't mention it anyway. Mendy Alvey. It's really, it's really for RJ and, and uh, Dave because I guess you were no longer involved with me. Actually, I spent a lot of time with Mendy. Yeah, it, it was Irving and Mendy that that uh, pushed CDTV so uh, so hard. So I spent actually a lot of time talking to them and getting to know them for that project. Well, there's been so much written about Mediani and how he destroyed Commodore. Um, but is that, first question, is it really true? And secondly, if you look at his, his official website, it's how he restructured and saved Commodore. So it's quite an interesting concept. So what do you think about that? 
Be careful. Well, Mehdi Ali, it, it's easy to sum it up. This was a guy who took over Commodore. He'd been a, basically a financial hatchet man for Prudential. Prudential was this big insurance company that got all this money and it didn't know what to do with it, so they invested it in companies. Mehdi Ali was pretty much this guy who, uh, and they had invest, invested in Commodore, which is, I think, where many first ran into Commodore. He, he would go to a company and that was not performing well enough for Prudential's taste and hack and slash. And I think they, you know, he made recommendations and they would implement some of them, but they weren't required to implement all of them. And, and they get profitable enough for Prudential to pull their money out. And that's, there's, I guess there's, you know, for Prudential that's a good business, but that's no way to run a computer company. So we had various other guys running various parts of Commodore. We had, we had Jack, we had um, um, Radigan, the, uh, the um, Pepsi guy coming in, which is why we kept drinking Coke, but um, <laughs> he, he came in and uh, like learned about Commodore. Um, we had Henry Rubin who ran engineering for a while, who didn't know, he was, he was a, like a mechanical engineer or something. He had an engineering background, which was good, because that's what he wanted to manage and he'd, he'd done management. He was a little bit crazy, but um, all mad. We're all mad here anyway, so. Um, but he, that, I mean, crazy in kind of a good way, and kind of a bad way, but between the management at the time at Commodore worked, it, it had found, we had found a way to make it work very well. Uh, we just needed more money. But um, Henry always had the fastest Amiga you could, I could deliver him on his desk. He had all the software, he was doing all of his work on Amigas. If, if it didn't do it right, he would call a software company or whatever to complain about it not being, because he, he would not use a PC because he wanted the experience, he wanted to know what we were doing right, he wanted to know what we were doing wrong, and a lot of us were like that. We're, you know, we're, we, I was making my own toys, so of course I've got an Amiga on my desk, but you know, Henry, you know, as a manager you don't have to. So, Mehdi Ali was a guy who didn't watch television, and didn't use a computer, and had no bloody idea why a computer that did television was a good thing. And he didn't make any efforts to figure out why. Um, you know, a good manager will say, well, I don't know these things, but I will surround myself, I'll, I'll meet all the people in the company who know these things, and they're gonna help me. Mehdi Ali met all those people and fired them, and hired his, put, his, put his own flunkies in place, of that, and just decided he knew he knew what was best. Yeah, I should enjoy, sir. Watch him 30 degrees. It'll be fun. You guys ready? Wow. Okay, good luck. Right, good morning everybody. Now, for those of you who don't know who we are, uh, my name is Dan Wood, uh, this is Randy Abbott, and uh, we're just a media enthusiast. Uh, I'm one fans of the best personal computer ever made. Uh, and the only difference is that we picked up a video camera and um, record our experiences of using the Amiga and upgrading our machines and uh, just enjoying using them still in 2015. And we put these videos on YouTube. Now, collectively, we've got it's around 4 million views, I think, we've got on our YouTube channels. So it's crazy to see just how many people still believe in the Amiga and still have a passion for it 21 years after it went off sale. Uh, now, my background, I've kind of got computers in my DNA, you could say, on the screen there at the bottom. There's my mother working on a mainframe computer back in 1974, uh, which I think had about the computational power of a wristwatch today, um, and it filled up probably half of this room. And my dad was an electronic uh, engineer, my mum uh, worked on the mainframe, so my dad built them and my mum programmed them. Uh, so that kind of got me into computers, and then I got my first machine in uh, Christmas 87, and it was this here. Anybody know this machine? Yes! <laughs> the Commodore Plus 4. Now, it was kind of the, uh, you know, I wanted the Commodore 64, but this is what I got for Christmas, because my parents would get it quite cheap. And being a Plus 4 user, I'd go into a computer shop to try and get software. And it was kind of like doing an illegal deal. They'd have to open up a compartment under the couch and be like, you know, pull the sets out and have a great look and put them back. Um, and then it got to around the early 90s, and I really wanted a new machine. Uh, I had my sights on the Commodore 64 then. And I remember my mum, on uh, Christmas Eve, I'd asked her for a Commodore 64 the day after. And she took me to town, we were doing some shopping, 
And I said, I know Santa's going to bring me a Commodore 64 tomorrow. Can we maybe buy a few games for it? And then she said, you know, sorry son, unfortunately, um, Santa won't be bringing you a Commodore 64 this year. And I was heartbroken, but I thought, okay, maybe you haven't got your money, that's fine. And then uh, Christmas Day came, and that's what I received. Wasn't I cute? <laughs> a Commodore Amiga 500 Cartoon Classics pack, and you can see the shock on my face there. My eyes were almost on stalks. So yeah, Santa was there very kind to me in that year. And there's me uh, on my rig, back in the early 90s. Uh, going forward, so everyone And every year pretty much was Amiga stuff after that. There we go, the uh, Amiga 570 CD ROM drive. And I actually found my uh, receipt there from Christmas 91, 369 pounds. And I've got the warranty documents there as well, so I should ask David Pleasance actually, is that still valid? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's amazing to see a great turnout today. I'm going to pass you over to Ravi quickly, then we've got a short video to show you. Cool. Oh, this one works. Okay, so my kind of Amiga background was through video. So, um, we got an Amiga 2000, and it was used by the local TV station. They've been doing weather, and they kind of have the old graphics on it with Chroma Key and Gendlock. And uh, my dad used to work at the university. So, this was in Nottingham, we had a full lab that was full of Amiga, so we used in the final department for the video and kind of titling, stuff with SVHS and old school kind of videos. So I've been going to Amiga events and I've been going since World of Amiga, so this was the kind of late era of Amiga. And uh, I've been going to really tiny ones as well, you know, eight people in the church hall and stuff. <laughs> been kind of building them up and uh, recently Bletchley Park was the last big one I went to and on YouTube I'm releasing a video today which is a full show report of a tape that I found that I had put on YouTube so that's going to be out there and as Amiga kind of died in the UK there wasn't anything that was keeping it going and it was piracy and this was an old shop, it's now a gothic kind of emo shop, but before it was a hotbed of Amiga piracy, and they kind of just kept the faith going for a long time. After all the companies had abandoned it, it was kind of lost in the muck bill kind of era. The pirates kept it going and kind of kept the UK scene alive, and there were magazines in the UK that were still on the shelves till, you know, 2000, 2001, so. It's quite good, and yeah, we've got one more slide. Over here. What's that? This is Bletchley Park, which is yeah. where the videos are going to be released. Excellent. Now we've got a short video to show you with a uh, spe special message from someone right at the beginning. Sorry if I scuff a little monoton, I am about to graduate in one of Amsterdam's famous cafes. And I did not even recognize the Amiga I woke up with this morning. Well, it is my birthday party after all. So let's take a moment to remember why we are all here.
hopefully that brought back a few nice memories. Yeah, I, had to, I had to have a look inside. <laughs> I replaced Denise with the uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you had the switch at Pal, why? Yeah. You're still using this for development? Uh, no, not for development. We made some shows in the museum and... Uh, oh, no, I need to help.